Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. This is the weekly recap. It has been an absolutely crazy week. Michael and I have had an awful lot of fun, and there are some great stories that the staff have got teed up for you. We have had uh, three days in a row of 50,000 people on the site a day. We appreciate everybody uh, listening to all of our podcasts, making comments on our Substack. Please like, subscribe, share listen to the podcast and if you are an energy expert i want to talk to you if you want to talk about anything in the energy day end energy poverty if you want to talk about it bring it on we want to hear uh thanks and enjoy the show with that i'll turn it off the show have a great day hey let's start with our buddy over there at uh blackrock larry fink blackrock's larry fink jumps on next ai trade warning uh, world would be short power. This is absolutely a hoot. Uh, he's the CEO over there. And re- I'm going to start real quickly. Uh, do you remember in uh, last year, they lost $1.7 trillion in the first half of the year mm-hmm. because of their ESG investments in wind and solar. Now, this comes out to a quote. This is a quote out of the article. I do believe properly build out AI, we're talking about trillions of investing. So data centers could be as much as 200 megahertz. And they're now talking about data centers being one gigawatt. That powers a city, he told the city. The amount of power that's needed to use AI has a huge impact on society. Quote, you need dispatchable power because they can't turn off and on these data centers. Wind and solar is not an option. <laughs> well, it's the same stuff we said last week. And and in, in my opinion, what this article shows and everyone should take away from this article is that Larry Fink is a capitalist. He is going to let the winds of money dictate what he believes in. When, when, when everybody was money. pouring money into it. ESG, he was all for ESG. Now that everybody has sort of the ship has turned a little bit, we're all talking about AI. We're all talking about the necessary power needed to build out these data centers. Oh, well, guess what? Now he's talking about dispatchable power. If you believe anything that comes out of Larry Fink's mouth, do it at your own peril, because I promise you he's only looking out for himself and BlackRock and how they make money. He's right in this case. I agree with him. You need the dispatchable power because these data centers can't just be flipped on and off. We're going to need to build out a grid system that can handle the amount. As we talked about, you can't chat GPT at night because the wind's not blowing. But. What this clearly shows, and everybody right. who's listened to the show knows this, is just another example of Larry Fink doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about whether he, he he cares about where he believes the money is going to be. And right or wrong, it's his job as he's beholden to the shareholders. So there's maybe a larger conversation to have here about that, but he's just about the money. And that's really all it is. It is. Vermont becomes the first state to require oil companies to pay for climate change damages. Michael, I added lawfare as a category on Energy News Beat today. I mean, I was like, this is just, we got to start having, we're going to have a whole theory of things that are funded by the Soros family uh, attorneys, lawfare. It is just going to go nuts from here on up. And, and so that's how all this is tying together. Vermont has become the first state to enact a law requiring fossil fuel companies to pay their share of damage caused by climate change after the state suffered catastrophic summer flooding and damage from other extreme weather. Michael, I have a real question here, and I want, I want your opinion on this. Chemtrails, are they real? Or are they weather modification? Weather modification has been going on by the government for years. And call anybody you want. How are you going to prove that it's fossil fuel damage versus chemtrails or weather induced by the government? I just have no clue. If anybody's listening to this, this is this disgusting. Yeah, I mean, I have no, I have, I have no idea. I don't know anything about chemtrails, so I'll, I'm going to leave that up to, uh, to, to you. What, what's going on in Vermont? 
Well, uh, Republican Governor Phil Scott allowed the bill to become law with a signature late, saying he will be very concerned about the cost and outcome of the small state taking on big oil alone, what will be a grueling legal fight. Quote, I understand the desire to get seek funding to mitigate the effects of climate change that has hurt our state in many ways. How in the world is he going to prove it? The only winners out of lawfare are the attorneys and then the climate narrative. That's it. Yeah, so what they're going to do is they're going to basically, the, the Vermont State Treasurer, along with the Agency <laughs> of Natural Resources within their state, is going to provide a report by beginning of 2026 on the, quote, the total cost that Vermont and the state paid relative to the emissions of greenhouse gases from 1995 all the way to 2024. Ah, there's a weird little two-year gap in there, so I wonder who's going to do that. That assessment will look on the effects of public health, natural resources, agriculture, economic development, and then they're going, and a bunch, and a host of other stuff, then they're going to use some federal data to determine the amount of covered greenhouse gas emissions attributed to a fossil fuel company, and it's basically a polluter pays model, which says, you know, if, if you've traded or refined or extracted crude oil um, in the cost, or in the in, in the volumes more than a billion metric tons, um, then you're going to be liable to pay. The funny part is there are no oil companies based in Vermont. So what are you going to do? Go after cross states? It 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 gets back to again the stuff that you touched on in your speech um, uh, with Ted Cruz with right. legislation through regulation. This is how it comes down. Exactly. Or regulation through legislation, whatever it's called. Legislation through regulatory action. Okay, let's go to our buddies over there, Saudi Aramco. I I really like the way they manage things over there. Uh, Twelve billion shares sold out shortly after the deal opened. Isn't that kind of cool? I, I mean, tw what's a few billion between friends? Uh, the books were covered within the range of twenty six uh, uh, twenty six royals to twenty nine royals. What a uh, how much the how much. They're, they're not telling us where the demand came from, uh, but uh, you can't go wrong with it. Aramco shares fell 1.9% on Sunday, uh, valuating the company about $1.8 The stock dropped about 14% since the start of the year, since Bloomberg uh, first put out the report. Uh, Saudi government, Michael, owns 82% of Aramco, while the Kingdom's uh, Wealth Fund holds a further 16%. Wow. Yeah, you have to realize, though, one of the reasons why this could be an attractive offer, you know, for foreign investors is the fact that, um, you know, you're talking about the, the dividend over the course of a year is like a hundred and twenty four billion dollar dividend payout, which means their I, dividend yields about six point six percent, which is pretty good. Now, see. foreign investment attraction hasn't been much. We've a lot of it is local purchasers and how much of this is leaving Saudi relative to how much is staying between, you know, the, the Saudi government and their wealth fund, which you can kind of consider the same thing. So I think this is obviously a quick play to raise some money. They're going to use this money to kind of diversify, again, away from oil and gas fund, some of their other economic right. progress um, and projects specifically. Um, but it, there's a bunch of different um, uh, banks working on them. Um you know, it's it's super interesting. You know, it's, it's my opinion. I would do this in a heartbeat in order to get out of other uh, financial markets with the U.S. oil dollar. I would get out of the U.S. oil dollar, and this is one. He went from advising Putin to now he's advising MBS. So it's a miracle the world traveler you are. I am, and you know, I said, you know, just kidding, but no, I. Love it. The renewable green energy disaster off the northeastern U.S. is getting worse. This is out of the Telegraph by David Blackman. This is a quote. Uh, wind turbine maker Siemens Gamza announced even bigger layoffs, saying it would cut 15% of its global staff to adjust for the slowing market. Quote, our current situation demands adjustments that go beyond organizational changes. We will have to adopt to lower business volumes 
reduced activity in non-core markets and streamlined portfolio, said outgoing um, CEO uh, Jockian uh, Ector in a letter to his staff. In other words, oops. <laughs> yeah, yikes, oops. Um, the, you know, talk about a big oops. I mean, again, it's the problem with, um, again, the, the renewables market has been hit by the fact that they are highly, highly subsidized. And when you start layering off those subsidies, you then all of a sudden have to deal with the underlying economics of the business, which as we're seeing is not great. No. And uh, as we talked about on the energy realities with Doomberg, uh, with David Blackman and Tammy Nemeth this morning, uh, the wind farms uh, have really pulled a fast one on the public by using the Inflation Reduction Act in uh, double and triple billing folks by pulling in their turbines even before they were end of life. So the, the public ought to be glad that they're laying people off and it's not doing well yeah. your electricity bills are going to go higher uh, turkmenistan um uh Erdogan says uh turkmenistan could soon begin gas exports to turkey and europe i can't be i would be remiss without mentioning turkmenistan without mentioning toby keith toby keith has one of the greatest songs in the world when he's singing the song and he's going uh, out by Palestine and Turkmenistan. Let's flip the finger to the Taliban. Anyway, you cannot buy that kind of entertainment, but let's jump back to Turkmenistan. Uh, Miss producer, if you could bring this poster up, the poster's up and, and if Michael look in the dead center of the pod of the uh, map and you'll see the Caspian sea Turkmenistan is right there in the lower center of the right hand of the picture. Mm -hmm. That orange uh, pipeline coming across is critical because it is going through. My sources are saying this thing is going through. What that means is you can roll right on through to Club Med and now you can start pumping some natural gas in there to the eu and it's gonna bypass russia this is huge no this um, is unbelievably huge it is huge and hey it's the rebalancing of the world's energy economy we're seeing it live happen right now so and we love we love love more than a little club man da, 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 club man club man and flip a finger to the taliban i i when you we have turkey primarily interested this is a quote interested in turkmenistan gas because it has to diversify sources of gas imports and part of this is because of uh, the geopolitical crap that's going on in the EU. Uh, it's unbelievable. You can't buy stupid between the U uh, U.S. government and the EU government. I'm happy for the Turkmenistan folks. No, we're we're always nation first here. What's let's go to China, Iran, secure key strategic Iraqi gas field. Michael, this one has got three bullet points on, it, and this is really pretty pretty frightening. The Manseria field holds 4.5 trillion standard cubic feet of gas and expected to produce around 300 million SCF uh, of gas per day at its peak. For China, the location of the Manseria field fits perfectly into the vast network of oil and gas sites in Iraq. And this is going into Asia first. Because mm -hmm. this goes into our conversation yesterday with Turkmenistan and then feeding in. Oh, this feeds in through the Caspian Sea to the EU. Ah, Club Med. Club Med, this gets really bonkers that China is now usurping and going around Russia for their natural gas and geopolitical. It's well, weird, I think dude. what China is realizing is that if they're, at least this is my opinion, I think what they're watching happen to Russia in terms of how the world reacted to the invasion of Ukraine is how they're planning on the reaction being when they eventually invade Taiwan. One, they're seeing it's possible. They're seeing that Russia is now actually 
Nothing crazy has really happened to him. The key right. is energy, though. The key is securing multiple ports of and multiple import and export sources for energy, which is the key and underpins most global trade. So I think that's this has everything to do, in my opinion, with Taiwan. Oh, absolutely it does. And But you, you notice ta Taiwan's not mentioned in this article, but no. it's a second-order uh, magnitude. We always like effect, to think second-order effect. Though.